Hello and welcome back to OC Avery. I'm Oliver. Now today uh, we're going to do a video on uh, the, the young birds that we've got so far, uh, tips for weaning and just different things uh, as how we're going to treat the young birds over the next few months. Now it's middle of May so far and uh, breeding should really be well underway for most of the canary, well all of the canaries now and most of the British, uh, you know, goldfinches are probably just coming in now, uh, red poles might have started earlier, uh, and other birds like that. Now, what I'm going to run you through is my protocol for uh, young birds, how I wean my young birds, what I do with the young birds once they're weaned, and just basically my step-by-step -step routine with them, including all the different species, because it does vary depending on the species, and how I'm going to treat them over the next few months as they uh, reach adulthood, reach maturity, uh, and actually start to lose their feathers, because obviously young birds do really start molting from about 40 days old. Uh, so we'll cover all of that in today's video. So the first thing we're going to talk about is actually weaning the young birds. So your young birds have left the nest. They're on the perches and they're still relying on the parents or should be relying on their parents. Uh, what's happening is that they're, they're getting in the way, the parents are trying to go down on another nest, but it's also important that you don't disturb them. Now, what, you, what I do is I take a wire bath and uh, these are large ones. I got mine from Direct Bird Products. And I hang that on front of the on the front of the cage, and uh, put the egg food in there and stuff. And what I'm doing is just getting the young birds to begin with, get them used to going in and out of that cage, uh, so they are more settled. And it just keeps the egg food away from the parents wherever they're nesting, just tries to keep it a little bit more clean. Um, and then once I've seen the young birds starting to feed themselves, it is important that you don't take them away too early. So what I then do is I will uh, drop the door, I'll put the youngsters inside that external cage with the egg food and water and a perch. So what that means is that the young birds can feed themselves, but not only can they feed themselves, the parents can feed them through the bars. And what this allows them to do is slowly wean the self onto food uh, and solid food. Now, I must, must, must emphasize that you shouldn't do this until you are confident that the birds are able to feed themselves. You don't want to be doing this uh, un unless the birds have been at least fledged for a week. Uh, you're generally looking about three weeks old to when they might start to show interest of picking up and actually starting to feed themselves. But obviously that isn't guaranteed um, and there's no specific uh, age which you want to remove them at. Some people say 24 days or what. Uh, it's all based on the chick's development and are they able to feed themselves. Uh, so I put them in there and uh, just slowly over the course of a week, I'll have them in that cage maybe a few hours each day um, and just slowly increase that until I know that they are feeding themselves and uh, they're almost completely feeding themselves and they're fully independent as such. Uh, and then what I do from there is we'll take the young birds out and move them away from the parents to a different cage. So now the young birds are separate from the parents, they're feeding themselves and they're able to be self-reliant. Well, in that first few days of being away from the parents, it's really vital that you make sure that they are completely um, reliant on themselves rather than relying on the parents still. Uh, so what I try to do is one, I observe them and make sure that they are feeding and that they are comfortable. If they do look uncomfortable, and that could be signs of puffing up, not eating, dehydration, then really what I'll do from there is I'll put them back in with the parents if I felt that I might have moved them too early. Now, I'm always very careful with this. I really don't like to rip, take the risk. So I am, uh, you know, th this rarely happens. And sometimes it can just be a young bird, just the change of environment can make them nervous um, and perhaps don't want to feed themselves. Uh, so in that event, then you just put them back with the parents for a few days and try again, um, should they be okay. Now, young birds can be quite prone to dehydration. Uh, they're used to feeding themselves, but they do still rely on the parents for water sometimes. Um, so it is important that you make sure that before you've moved them, they are drinking as well. Uh, but what I do is I give them a normal drinker, uh, just like this one, but I also give them other things that have a, a good 
water content. So I give them pearl morbide. Obviously, make sure you soak this correctly. I've uh, emphasized this in previous videos so it doesn't swell up in the birds. And I also like to give them cucumber. Obviously, cucumber, it will fill the bellies of the birds, but it will also keep them hydrated. And that is vital, uh, especially with the warmer weather, which we are getting a little bit of at the moment. But uh, welcome to the UK. That might not, be, you know, might not be the case over the next uh, day or so. We might go back to uh, hailstorms and showers. Um, but that is then another important thing is that you keep them hydrated and make sure they're healthy. So fast forward to the youngsters being about 40 days old. This is where they might start to drop feathers and begin to replace their young feathers, their nest feathers, into the adult feathers. Now remember, with young birds, they're called unflighted for a reason, and that is because they don't lose their flight feathers in their wings. So uh, don't be alarmed if you're thinking, why has my red factor not got, uh, you know, got white uh, white flight feathers it's because it's a young bird um, and, and that's just just something generally with those guys so what you need to remember then is um, now they begin to lose the feathers and this is when it is a bit more stressful that for them uh, and it is important that you keep an eye on them and uh, make sure they're healthy so what I do is I make sure that the youngsters have always or very often about five days a week have access to vitamins. So I give them a multivitamin supplement in the water and they're just going to drink that through and obviously that's going to really help them with their feathers and development. It's also important to remember that for some of the young birds, you might be having red factors, you might have mules and hybrids that need red. Well, it is important to probably now start colour feeding. You want to get that in the system so that once it comes to them dropping the feathers and developing the new ones, you aren't leaving it too late and you get ended up with a, a red factor with random white feathers uh, throughout it so you're going to want to start color feeding that now um, it will depend on what type of color feed you want if you're doing I don't know yellow mosaics you might want to use carafil yellow to get the yellow stronger on them if you're doing maybe Norwich and you've got some clear Norwich then carafil orange and if you're doing red factors mules or hybrids that require red then use carafil red or something which is uh, you know a color feeding supplement now there's always the dosage on the uh, packaging so make sure you stick to that recommended dose um, you can do this in the water but you can also do it in the color feed I know some breeders would rather do water some would rather do food. Uh, I guess the thing is with water is that you guarantee the birds are getting it because if they don't drink that water, they're gonna die. So they're going to drink the water and it, or it forces the, the red to go in uh, or whatever you color feed in them. Now there is the option to go in uh, egg food. Then I've got some red fact egg food uh, and that's going to be for uh, mules and hybrids really. I'm not going to use it on the red poles because they're current year birds, uh, possibly crossbills, uh, but, but really any birds that you colour feed and you can also give them that coloured egg food and that'll just probably enhance the colour uh, and obviously if you're doing these for the show bench and you're colour feeding them for that um, it is important you don't burn them but more on that in a different video so that's then the supplements that you want to give all of the birds if you're going to be colour feeding and uh, also just generally make sure they have access to multivitamins so it will try and relieve stress and make the molt a much easier process for them. So then you've got to remember the native birds. Uh, they are slightly different and uh, you know all these techniques are the same for uh, natives as it is for canaries etc. Uh, but some young birds are more prone to uh, other things. So I touched on this in Breeding British Birds episode 6 at the beginning. Uh, young green finches. Now green finches are generally quite prone to going light and that is a term that we use uh, in referring to uh, basically dying of coccidiosis. Now coccidiosis is, uh, I believe it's an intestinal parasite and it's, it's, it's in the gut of the bird obviously uh, and it, it just seems to be that green finches are most prone to it, they will go light. So you want to stick to the recommended dosages, of course, uh, but you also want to make sure that you don't, you, you, you don't lose young birds. Now, with uh, green finches, we want to give them a slightly higher concentration of the Baycox or the coccidiosis medication. Now, what I use is 2.5% Baycox concentration, right? Uh, and with that, I'm using 3 mil per litre, five days a week every other week for young green finches um, and that's really just going to clear them out and just keep them healthy 
please remember that if you know if you forget something like that it can cost young birds so please make sure especially with young green finches and the adults anyway because they're quite as well prone to go in light that you are giving them baycocks and whether that be through the breeding season and when they're youngsters because it, especially when they're youngsters you can lose a lot of birds very quick um due to coccidiosis so that's just something to remember with the other birds a lot of other natives don't seem to be as prone to it but nevertheless it doesn't mean that baycocks or any coccidiosis medication is going to hurt them provided you give them the recommended uh, constant like dosage as such so with the red poles uh, they will get probably one mil per litre the same for the siskins the canaries the bullfinches the crossbills um, uh, mules and hybrids and things like that and it's just important that you make sure that they are okay and that they are going to be okay um, by giving them this coccidiosis medication and you're just not going to use, lose uh, young birds to go in light or at least you are unlikely to lose them. So for anyone who's bred bullfinches, um, at least this has been my experience, this is what I learned last year uh, where we, we went wrong and I know where I went wrong and I fixed it for the next round. Now, when I bred bullfinches last year, something that I noticed was that when the young birds were fledging, they weren't strong enough. Uh, and there was also struggling to stand and had leg issues. Now, why was this? My, my first immediate thought could have been, well, have we got related parents here, perhaps too closely related like brother and sister, and it might have caused some defect, for example. Now, what I actually found was that there was a calcium issue uh, and the bullfinches were requiring more calcium than most of the other natives. And that wasn't the parent birds, but that was rather the young birds. They just needed more calcium to develop those bones um, so what I did for the next round is I gave them calcium in their water. So they were taking in the calcium through that. And I also gave them calcium in their egg food. Now always, again, stick to the recommended dosage, but you don't have to use a calcium supplement. You don't have to get a processed calcium supplement. Now, remember with calcium, you need a soluble one really, because it's going to be absorbed much better by the ileum of the bird. So what you want is uh, some calcium carbonate uh, and, and that works generally best. It's soluble, the birds will take it in better in the intestines. Um, but otherwise, what you can use is eggshell. Now, I've found this has worked a treat for me in the past when I've needed to give them a real big calcium boost. Um, and that can be laying hens, egg-bound egg hens and stuff, stuff like that. Well, I just get an eggshell, put a, a, you know, crack an egg, do whatever I'm doing with the inside of the egg. And this is chicken egg, by the way, not a canary egg. Um, put it in your pestle and mortar, mix it up and just make it into like a, a, a fine powder almost of calcium but you can also make it into slightly larger pieces which the birds will take just as well put that in their food and then obviously that will then go and make its way into the chicks now that's just a tip with bullfinches that's what i found last year that's what i'm doing this year because we have got some young bullfinches due out very soon so make sure you stay tuned for that in breeding british birds episode seven which will be out next saturday now one of the final things with this is also remember young birds they're molting out it's a stressful time they're losing feathers you want to make sure you're giving them baths now as much as it's important to give the parent birds baths it's equally as important to give the young birds baths it's going to keep the feathers in good condition and keep them less stressed from the whole molting experience remove any excess feathers it's really going to make them better birds i think in the long run by giving them loads of baths as youngsters so what i do is just an external bath keep give them some fresh water in that leave it for a few hours some young birds at least when they're first learning to how to have a bath it will take them time so just be patient with them and they'll come round. Uh, and it, you know that that's the important part is making sure that they do have baths and access to fresh water at all times and then finally, um, there is the option to get wild food. Now, obviously natives will feed on wild food, you know, uh, chickweed, um, just, just random things like that. I got off the top of my head, dandelions, etc., like that. Um, but we'll, we'll have to cover that more in another video on um, live, um, you know, wild food and what. But also, uh, I found that this worked quite nicely with my young red poles. Um, is giving them uh, naturally wild sourced weeds and uh, vegetation and they just really appreciated that kept them 
excited and interested and they were just eating that no problem demolished it quite quickly uh, and it did add and help to the plumage but it's not a necessity obviously you can give them uh, supplements that will do similar and obviously what you do want to make sure and be careful of is whenever you're giving wild food that you've gone and picked please make sure that one you clean it so you don't bring any nasties in and two you make sure that that doesn't have any weed killer or any pesticides chemicals or anything on it because if it does you're going to lose your birds because that will poison them and it will kill them so please if you are going to feed wild food be very careful so that does bring us to the end of this uh, short video for the midweek. Now, uh, that's just a few tips on uh, weaning young birds and actually taking them to the mole and uh, and so forth, with some of them already being there. I've seen quite a few canary fanciers have already got young birds starting to drop feathers uh, and, you know, red factors being colour fed, etc. So if you have enjoyed today's video and you'd like to see more, please leave us a like and subscribe down below so you don't miss any of my future content. So thank you very much for watching everyone and I'll see you in the next one.